This is not a debate how to pray and how what not to pray. It's not so much theological what I want to bring this morning, but more like a, uh, an encouragement, something to motivate us to, to approach Jesus with simplicity and with faith and let Jesus uh, receive our, our, our prayers just as he did to these people. So the first one we want to look at is the a leper that met Jesus in Mark chapter 1, verse 39 to 42. <coughs> and we read, So he traveled throughout the region of Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and casting out demons. A man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus, begging to be healed. If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean, he said. Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared and the man was healed. How, how simpler can it be than this? A man came to just ask Jesus, kneeling in front of him, and explaining exactly what he wanted to. It's a very short conversation. No long prayers have been uh, sp spoken here. It was uh, busy. There was a lot of disturbance. <coughs> it was in the middle of a crowd, a busy crowd, uh, lots of action. The if here in verse uh, 40, if you are willing, is not an if of doubts, like if, you know. It's more like uh, a questions, not if you can, but if you are willing to heal me, it's about me. The if is a, more about me. Like, uh, do I care for you? Do you love me? Do I count into your eyes enough so that you can grant me uh, my request? This question came out of desperation and uh, humility. But one thing that we can understand very clearly this morning, and that's the encouragement for us from this text, is that Jesus immediately says, described him as moved with compassion. Do you go to a Jesus that, is, that you feel this connection, that when you address your request to Jesus, when you go to his throne of grace, like what, what comes into your imagination when you go to Jesus, when you think of going to Jesus, when you think of addressing your prayers to Jesus, how do you see him? Uh, what kind of God are you talking to? Distance, cold, <coughs> busy, uninterested, too big for, for you, you're too small. Like, how do you go to Jesus? How do you perceive Jesus? Here, we have something to, for all of us to help us for this week of prayer and fasting. Jesus is moved with compassion. And, the, and this text, we, we, we studied it before, uh, it's like the, the, the bowels, the, the inside. Like, you know, like when, when you get like a tragic news, <coughs> you feel a, a cramp in your, in your stomach. You, you feel something that is tightened inside of you. You feel, you know, compassion. You have emotions, strong emotions for that. Jesus has this kind of uh, nature. You, he loves you. You know, what else can God and Jesus do to prove to you more that he loves you? That he has not already done, you know? And uh, the, and the, and the book of Romans, Paul says, if God has given you Jesus, if he has been that far, you know, toward you, will he not give you everything above that, you know, like everything that you would need. He has shown you already that the level of his love, the ultimate love, he has given you Jesus. So with Jesus, you, you, you're okay. And then you see a Jesus here that is depicted to you as moved with compassion. And then this man, this man just asked the question, if you are willing, you can heal me, make me clean. And Jesus says, I am willing. So this week when you go to Jesus, will you go this way? Will you go to a Jesus that is moved with compassion, that is waiting for you, and that is a willing Jesus to hear your request? How many of you will go to Jesus, prepare your mind, prepare your heart before this week of prayer, go to this Jesus, this is the Jesus of the Bible, this is what the Holy Spirit wants you to understand and see of Jesus this morning. 
this is the Jesus that you are praying to. This is the Jesus that is waiting for you th this week to present your prayer. Maybe a amen would be appropriate for that. Hallelujah. The second story, is it, they are all stories that you know so well, but they are real events of real people just like you. Blind Bartimus. And we find it in Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. They reached Jericho, and as they left town, a large crowd followed him. A blind beggar named Bartimus, son of Timus, was sitting beside the road. When Bartimus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And he was shouting louder than that, I'm sure. Do you want me to try louder? <laughs> I can try louder. And he says, be quiet. You're in the church. You're in the crowd. Be quiet. You know? and, but he only shouted louder. He only shouted louder. Son of David! Have mercy on me. You know? Are you awake now? Even <laughs> Pastor Jennifer is awake. Yeah. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, tell him to come here. So they called the blind man, cheer up, they says, come on, he's calling you. And he threw his coat aside, jumped up, and you know, went as fast as a blind person can, can go to, to go to Jesus. And this amazing short conversation takes place. What do you want me to do for you? You know? How difficult, be honest, how difficult is it for you this morning to imagine or to see Jesus asking you this question? How difficult is it for us? Do you think Jesus asks you this question, that he, he gives you this freedom, that he gives you this privilege, that you have the right to answer these kind of questions? or? This was a special moment. This was only for him. No, no not for me. I, I, it cannot happen to me. How do you see this moment? How do you interpret it? How does your faith respond to that special moment of him? Is Jesus different with a person than with another person? Is Jesus has different rules and different standards? Uh, you, I like your face. You, I don't like your face. I'll heal you half, but you, I'm not listening to you. And come back next week, or you know, like, uh, uh, how do you see Jesus? Is that the same Jesus? Jesus here, he, he, he says, "What do you want me to do for you?" Was it the question? And he said to Jesus, very simply, short conversation, I want to be healed. I want to see. That's all. Did Jesus know the answer to that question? What do you want me to do for you? So why did he ask the question? Again, it's an encouragement to us. Can you verbalize? Can you tell Jesus? Can you come to Jesus and dare boldly to open up and tell what, how you feel. Uh, do you feel privileged, Jesus? You know this, this uh, experience, you have received the same privilege through prayers. Do you have access to prayer? As Jesus died for you? As you open a new way into the presence of God, are you invited to come boldly before the throne of God? If you are, if you believe that, then the, the question that Jesus has asked this blind person is addressed to you as well. Because the, the door is open to you and to the heavenlies. There is grace. There is mercy. There's someone to listen to you and to help you in your time of need. So you, when you come to that place, the same question is being asked through prayer. Prayer is the, the fact of asking the same questions. What do you want me to do? Why are you here? Why did you come to me today to my throne of grace? Why did you come? I invited you, so you come. So what do you want to tell me? What, what's your need? What can I do for you? I love you. What's your need? Tell me. 
we have the same privilege as it was given to this uh, Bartimaeus over here. You know, this man had very little to know uh, Jesus compared to what we have. We have the gospel, we have the Bible prophecy, we have the gospel, we have a, a history of the church. We can look back and we can understand. So there is no reason why we would not dare to pray good prayers because Jesus trusted him. What do you want me to do? He didn't change his mind. Okay, I, I, I'm okay to be blind, but just, I just want to be rich. He did not change his, his prayer. He had one, one thing in mind, and Jesus uh, knew. And he already had confessed the faith in who Jesus was, the Messiah for Israel. So in 1 John, we read a similar promise that is addressed to us. When you pray according to his will, we have the assurance or the confidence that he hears us and that he will grant us the prayer that we just presented to him. It's the same thing. When Jesus asks you, what do you want me to do for you? He knows that you have a heart for him. He knows that you are seeking the kingdom of God. He knows that you appreciate your salvation, that you are thankful that you live for him. He actually opened the, 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 the way, the access to the throne of grace to you because he trusts that you have a heart for the kingdom of God. You have a heart for the interest of God. You have a heart, you know that God will bless your life. So he's not afraid to give you this privilege. He knows that when you will come to pray, you will pray according to his heart. You will not pray like a, a worldly. You will pray. You know, if you spend a week, if this morning you are serious enough and you walk with God to say, I commit myself this week, I'm going to fast and pray. What kind of prayer are you going to pray to Jesus this week? You're not going to pray stupid prayers, selfish prayers, or uh, ungodly prayers. You've already shown that you are serious to commit yourself to fasting and prayer. You're going to pray prayers that will glorify God, that will uh, enable you or strengthen you or, or restore you or transform you to be better Christians, to be a stronger witness. You will pray something that is good for you, for your family, but it's all in line with the salvation of God. It's all in line with the, the, what the scriptures has given you as privilege. So you pray in line with the promise of God. Another thing that we read in the Old Testament, delight yourself in the Lord. And what do you receive? The desire of your heart. Again, the door is open to you. So Jesus is not afraid to come to you because you are a committed Christian this morning. And he knows you and he knows your heart to, to ask each one of you, what do you want me to do for you? That's your privilege. So this week, when you come to Jesus in prayer, will you, will you tell Jesus just that? Lord, if you ask me that same question you asked Bartimaeus, here is what I will answer to you. This is what I want you to do for me. Because you have this right. You have this privilege. So exercise it during this week. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, you see how Jesus is shown to us as approachable. That's my point this morning. So that you will have confidence this morning. You, yourself, me, I can approach Jesus. He will listen. He will be moved with compassion when I am in time of needs. Go to Jesus because this is the Jesus that you, is presented to you. Go with confidence. And one verse that I want to close with, uh, Hebrew 4.16. Uh, I use the easy to read version because it says it in a special way. With Jesus as our high priest, we can feel free to come before God's throne where there is grace. We can feel that, that freedom. We can feel, we go for it with feeling. You see, it's not religious, it's really down to earth. It's me, my feeling, my emotional life, and Jesus, my connection with Jesus. I can feel free. Because in the, in the Bible, we, we, we are used to read it, come boldly. Boldly means openly, freely, Honestly, it means all of these things. So that's why I like this version that says we can feel free to come and we can feel that we will be heard. 
we can feel that He loves us. We, are, we have been invited by Him.